Hey there, boys and girls. This is Chapter 6, Lesson 4. The title is Algebra and Right Expressions. Uh, lesson 4 really builds on the inquiry lab that you did uh, in the previous, uh, previous lesson. Uh, there wasn't a video lesson for that, uh, but in your book you practiced building uh, writing some expressions after building some models from uh, a story or word situation. Today's lesson really builds on that and we are getting into really the the what I think is uh, really the heart of algebra and translating real-life situations into mathematical expressions. So uh, this is really awesome practice what we're doing uh, in that lab and in this lesson. Uh, so, this is our focus today. What we are doing is we are translating, or we are going to translate uh, words. We're going to translate words into an algebraic. Uh, expression. Super, super powerful skill. Uh, translating words or some kind of unknown we're trying to figure out into an algebraic expression that we can then solve using mathematics. Uh, our process is we're going to describe the process right here and then down here I will walk through some examples following this process. So we're going to have uh, some words, okay, describing a situation, something that could be happening in real life. And we're going to be looking for the keywords here. There's always going to be some keywords that tell us what to do in mathematics. From there, we're going to take the words, the situation, and we're going to define the variable. What are we trying to find or what in the situation is varying? It's the amount that we don't know, something that we don't know from the words, and we're going to define the variable. Again, when we're defining the variable, you could pick any letter you want. From there, after you define the variable, you're going to build a model like we did yesterday. Now, this is optional. I'm going to put optional here. If it, if it helps your thinking, you can build a model. Uh, from that, then we are going to write the algebraic expression. So this describes our process. Uh, over here, now I want to talk about some keywords, and there's more keywords than what I'm going to write up here, uh, but this is a good start. So over here, I'm going to write keywords. These are words you should be on the lookout for. Um, all of these keywords mean that you're going to be adding something. I'm just going to draw a line here separating our process. This is the process. Here are the keywords. So these words mean you're going to be adding more than greater or greater than an increase Add, uh, and I think that's it. So again, there's you're going to run across more, but if you see these five more than something, that's going to be adding five. Six greater than something, that's going to be adding six. An increase of 4.5, you're going to be adding 4.5. These keywords indicate subtraction in mathematics. Fewer than, 
less than or less subtracted uh, minus So 8 fewer than something is going to be subtract 8. Uh, those are keywords to look for for subtraction. Keywords that indicate multiplying. Uh, blank times. And blank could be any number like 12 times, 8 times, 4.5 times. Uh, multiplied by. Uh, there are some specific ones like doubled, that means times two, tripled, that means times three, um, let's see, twice would be also mean doubled, twice is going to be times two. And again, this is a good list, but there you will find more keywords uh, divided. These words um, indicate dividing. Divided by blank, so like divided by three, divided by four, whatever the number is, half as much. And of course, half would be dividing by two. Uh, a third of would be dividing by three. Uh, there are some other keywords, again, that are not on this list, but it's a very good start. Okay, so let's get some, separate these with some color. Keywords to be on the lookout. These all indicate adding and you can come back as you discover others that are not on this list you can add them these words all indicate subtraction I'm going to translate into subtraction uh, these keywords are going to translate into multiplying and these keywords are going to translate into dividing situations Okay, now let's really put these into a couple of good examples. Uh, so I'm going to draw a line right down the middle right here for our two examples. About like that. And we're going to start with words. And we'll work through this example first and then we will work through another example over here. So the first example we're going to look at is six dollars less than the original price. So this is words, six dollars less than the original price. So from there, we're trying to identify keywords. Well, less than is the keyword. Six dollars less than means we're going to be subtracting six from the original price. We don't know what the original price is, so that is, I'm going to highlight that as the variable. We're going to define the variable. That is our variable right there. I don't know what that original price is. I'm going to define it and assign it a variable. So that's the next step. Define. Again, we're working through this process right here. So the original price, we're defining the variable as the original price. And I can assign any variable. I could assign T, V, W, X, A, G. I'm going to assign it though P just because that to me, I'm going to say P equals the original price.
So P is assigned to the original price. Again, the model. This part is optional. If you want to build a model, help your thinking, you sure can. So this is what we did on the inquiry lab. So I'm going to make a bar that represents the price. Okay, I'm going to assign this P. So this represents the original price. And if I go back to the words, I want six dollars less than the original price. So this is the original price. I want six dollars less. So my model might look like this. This right here is six. Here's the original price. I am taking off this amount, taking off six. So the algebraic expression algebraic expression for this example right here. This is example one. Example one, six dollars less than the original price. The algebraic expression that represents that in mathematics we would say is p subtract six. This represent the p represents the original price and we are showing six dollars less than that. Six dollars less than the original price. P subtract six. These are the two big things that you're going to be doing today. The, your book, your practice, it gives you the words. You are going to be defining the variable. Okay, so this right here. And you are going to be writing down what letter and what that represents the original price. Again, the model is optional, and you are going to be coming up with the algebraic expression. Translating words into an algebraic expression. Okay, let's look at a little more uh, example two little trickier one. So for this we're going to translate four more four more than three times than three times the number of points. So there's our situation in words. Four more than three times the number of points. So if I go back to my keywords, I actually have a few things going on here. More than and three times. Okay, but the first thing I'm going to do is assign the variable. Again, that's we're assigning that to something in the situation that we don't know and we get to decide what variable we want to use. So the number of points is something, we don't know what that is. It doesn't tell us what the number of points is. That is going to be our variable. And again, I can pick anything. I could, I could define this as P in this situation. I could use P and define it as the number of points. I could use W, I could use C. I'm going to decide, again, it doesn't matter. I'm defining it myself, but I'm going to use n for this one. n is the number of points. Okay, let's build a model to help our thinking on this one. So I want three times the num four more than three times the number of points. So I'm going to start with three times the number of points. And n is the number of points. So I want three times that. So if this is n, okay, there's n, the number of points. Well, in my model, I want three of those. I want three times the number of points. So I want three. 
So far, that's my model. Three times the number of points. That's this part. Three times the number of points. N is the number of points, and here it is three times. Well, what else do we have in this model is four more than this. Four more than three times the number of points. So in my model, I'm going to add another bar onto the model, and that's going to be a four. Four more than three times the number of points. So next thing I'm going to do is translate this into an algebraic expression. Well, this is 3 times n. So I could say 3 times n. And then I'm adding 4 onto it, plus 4. 3 times n plus 4. Now I could be done right there. 3 times n. I also could have written it like this. Let me show a couple other ways I could have written it. 3 dot n plus 4. Those two are interchangeable. 3 times n plus 4. 3 times n plus 4. Uh, we're going to start moving away, though, from using that x because we're using algebra now, and we might get confused with that as a variable. The most common way that you'll see this written, 3 times n plus 4, is going to be this. 3 with an n right next to it. And we learned from a previous lesson, a number right next to a variable always, always means they're being multiplied. So these are all three the same expression, just different ways of writing it. This one, though, is going to be the most common way you will see it. 3n plus 4, which means 3 times n plus 4. 4 more than 3 times the number of points. We just translated words into something we can use and work with mathematically. Okay, this is your practice today. Uh, defining the variable in a, from a situation and coming up with an algebraic expression. Uh, uh, something else that confuses kids is I'm not solving anything. Notice I don't have a number. I'm not trying to get to a number. I am just trying to translate words into an expression today. That's it. Uh, here is today's hidden treasure. Okay, if your name gets picked and you've got all chapter six notes and the assignment for today completed and you can solve this puzzle, you could be the winner. See you soon for lesson five.